the mere fact that I have the pleasure of speaking with you today, you know, you may not fully be conscious of this. I owe it entirely to my college experience because I learned English very late. You know, if I were to stay in Japan, and I might have become a ed well-educated person and a fully functioning adult, but I, there was no way that I would have been able to have any conversation with you of this type. Yeah. I might have learned English as a foreign language, and in indeed I did. I mean, English is my uh, seventh language, uh, very late learning. But um, you know, it's because I lived in a college environment in the American sense, um, Oxford and Princeton, that I began to became able to speak English and I can communicate more than smoothly with you. So I owe my that part of my life to my college experience, and indeed I'm now married to an English woman, and that's. Um, that's of course I wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have been able to communicate at all had I not gone to college. College is a traditional place where things have been so organized that you sort of open your eyes, romantically speaking, or more prosaically speaking, you go and live with people from different backgrounds, They're people you wouldn't have met naturally. And that's a bit like living in a foreign country. I have lived in eight countries so far, and that was a very, very difficult, but also enriching experience. You know, I had to adapt my, my personality and change my personality in, in, indeed and evolve into other, you know, more expanded versions of myself, learn the language, speak something as exotic as English, for example, with people that I had never met before, and so on and so on. But college is a bit like this. You are living in, in some sense, a foreign land, in a foreign culture, um, and that's how you expand your view of the world and you have more freedom to choose from and you know where you are. In my case, I didn't really have a mentor in the classical sense, but I was enormously, shall I say, mentored by my friends. They didn't know that they were mentoring me. I think some of them perhaps did because, you know, but I certainly wasn't aware and I think I don't aware of having mentored any of my friends, but maybe they reciprocate and they say the same thing. But 20, 30 years later, I realized that in fact, I learned a lot from them and um, they taught me and I might have taught them, but all of that is happening without this label of mentoring. Maybe 30 years from now, I realized that there was some professor who mentored me and. Uh, but this happens with a delay and with some maturing in myself. I think mentoring, this mentoring relationship is something that naturally arises, almost, you know, very, very sort of quietly and gently from just a professional cons conscience and, um, and willing to do well in each person. So if you are teaching, well, let's teach well. And let's teach caringly, and let's teach so that the other person can learn. And if you do that every day, without this, you know, hula bazoo of a mentoring business, you end up being a good mentor. I personally feel that I owe a lot to higher education, and my students that I see seem to enjoy what they're doing here. And I have, I'm old enough now to have met students who were my students 10 years ago. And many of them, thank goodness, seem to remember their higher education fondly. You are creating this uh, opportunity for young people to come together from different backgrounds, from different um, countries sometimes, to uh, experience life together for four years. And then sometimes, you know, fight, sometimes fall in love, sometimes fall out of love, but anyway, make friends for life. This uh, model of, American model of college life, higher education, which, as I say, is an invention, quite a recent invention, perhaps over the 20th century or the 19th century at the earliest, um, creates that opportunity. <laughs>